me. I love that song. I never knew it was his. So yeah, this is a review, Popcorn Junkies review of Mystify, Michael Hutchins. I think the full title is Mystify. This Michael Hutchins, mm -hmm. um, which is the story of the lead singer of In Excess, who uh, we probably also all know infamously for his relationships with Helena Christensen and Kylie Minogue, and, and of course, sadly, all the eights towards the end. Now, this is a curious one, this. There's been quite a few biopic documentaries. I mean, the most famous one, which kind of transformed this family's life, was Amy. Well, our daughter, Maddie, or eldest, you Maddie. Know, she's a popcorn but junkie. But not everyone has. Some people just be coming for the first time. Uh, who's a popcorn junkie uh, with us? She um, she watched the documentary and fell madly and deeply mm. in love with Amy Winehouse. Yeah. And actually with music. So she fell in love. And now Maddie is the most incredible songwriter. And yeah, you can chart it back to her. And you can chart Amy. it back to that documentary. And it I just, do. It just fired up her Absolutely. soul, didn't it? And I do think that's the purpose of these films, because mm. I was about to say, you know, could you have too many? And I think the thing about films about like musicians and singers, mm. creatives of any form, but of course with music, you've got that added emotional sort of lens of it passing through sound and music as well, and often their performance. Um, it really gives, it makes you realise how much of a singer's creative life is about their life, you know, how much well, just, of their life comes through. I mean, it's just not anybody that has a complex personality, exactly. just fascinating. Exactly. Because with Amy, I love her music now, but I didn't then. No, no. Michael Hutchins didn't know no. his music, didn't love his music. So for me, who's not a muse deeply into music, I find these, I mean, I will run towards, I mean, it's like the Art and Senna one that I still haven't seen, yeah, that I really oh, yeah, want to see Senna. that. Yeah, I've yeah. got no interest whatsoever and the Maradona. in race driving, but, but these, but these extremely talented people are fascinating. Yeah, exactly. They? And that's the thing. There's always something in their stories that's amazing. So this is the story of Michael Hutchins. And uh, of course, who um, tragically died in 1997 um, by hanging himself. Now, the story of Michael Hutchins, I've got some skin in the game on this. Well, I, it's a bit more complicated than hanging himself no, because it was, we, we, there no, was always a grey ocean but whether that, it was a that's, But that's, well, yeah, but that's what most of the public will have received. They'll have just heard that that happened. Whereas actually, obviously, this film gives us some insights into the complexities leading up to that. The incredibly remarkable sort of discoveries of how and why his mental state sort of shifts. Now, it's an archive only, <coughs> only documentary again. So you don't see any of the talking heads. That's very like Amy. It's very like the films that, um, of Maradona and Ayrton Senna. So this is a real vogue now for just archive-led films. And that can, in many ways, be a real strength as a documentary maker. It, it, it potentially can be very limiting because it's totally dependent on the archive you've got available. And there was a couple of years ago, there were, or last year, there were two Whitney documentaries. One felt very much sort of richer than the other because you had more unique access footage. Um, the director is Richard Lowenstein. He's worked with Hutchins a lot and in excess. He made a lot of their music videos in the past. So I'm presuming he had sort of you know, pro preferred ac preferential access to some archives and family footage and well, stuff and like that. Well, you know, it's a bit, but it, it, I think the people, the contributors must have felt that it's Michael had trusted yeah. them. Because Helena Christensen, I've never seen her talk about Michael Hutchins and Kylie. Well, the I Kylie mean, Minogue God, sequence. Kylie into well, we'll get to that in wow. a sec. I do think sometimes it is great when you have a documentary maker who was close to the subject, but in other ways it can be a real, pro really problematic. You can get into hagiography. Hagiography, exactly. Mm -hmm. And also you can get into just avoiding stuff that in a weird way you take for granted because you know the person so yeah. well, which to the outside world yeah. is like, well, hang on a minute, why did that connect and why did yeah. that do that? I have some skin in the game because when I started out as a uh, video journalist, I was assigned the High Court uh, part of the story when Bob Geldof and Paul Yates were mm. divorcing and Hyde Hutchins was on the oh, scene. I remember, it was just Oh yeah, a and here's, story. here's a really uh, sort of <coughs> idiosyncratic detail. Um, big thumbs up if you can spot I appear in a couple of frames of this film. <laughs> I'm in this film somewhere, bizarrely, as a reporter, it's very funny. Um, but uh, but no, and also weirdly, my paths with uh, my paths with Michael Hutchins intersected once again later in my life in '97, um, when he did his last tour in the UK in Manchester, and me and a colleague, Steph, dear Steph, we did the last interview with him in the UK before he went back to Australia, and all I can say Still was. Got that. I did, we never owned, you never owned the rushes, you never owned the rushes. So, but what I would say was he was incredibly quiet, incredibly dark. I was half expecting to see the footage from that. It's probably in some vault somewhere at Mentorn Films. But I was half expecting to see the interview because he was so 
dislocated and disassociated and odd. And yet at the same time, heroin. I don't know, but he was incredibly gentle. Mm. He seemed incredibly gentle, but incredibly quiet. And I shot this really emblematic shot of him coming off the tour bus. And he used to do this thing where he'd throw his arms wide like he would on stage and just fall forward. And he did that as the, as the coach arrived, we had, we were the only guys with access to him. And he stood on the doors of the thing and he just fell forward and he wow. landed on the floor. And I was like, he's a madman. I mean, a madman. I mean, you don't land on the floor. Just, he must have had a broken just bloody hit the nose. No, he, well, he caught well, himself at the bottom. Well, so, so anyway, what we so, find out in this yeah. film might, might give us some understanding. So anyway, so yeah, so going in, you were not necessarily <coughs> someone who knew about Michael Hutchins, were you? I only knew about, first of all, I thought he was quite an unattractive oh, sort right, of like, oh, yeah, yeah, a bit like, a bit mm. queasy, mm. because I only knew him towards the end, yeah. through the Paulie Yates right, time, right. and I felt sorry initially for Bob Geldof, because, mm. you know, the breakup was awful, well, again, we'll get to that later, mm. so I went in just going, well, I went in because I loved the Amy Winehouse mm. um, and the Whitney biopics, and I thought, yeah, look, I, I, I'm not interested in him really, or his mm. music, but let's, let's just just see. Well, oh my God, I had no, because Paul Yates was always talking about what a sex god he yes. was and all of this. So we start off right hearing about him right from a small child. Yeah. So that immediately got me hooked in yeah. because he didn't have an easy so life. Sweetie. Yeah, we crept around the fact that obviously mm. things were very difficult at home mm. because we started off with his best friend at the time mm. and the fact that he was always staying at his house mm. and you've got the, the father of the best friend talking about how things weren't great for him yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. So we never really find out what those, although we do discover that his mum was quite a madam, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right from a little, so we, we find out about him from a little boy and I love him. I fall Very for him. shy. Sweet, Very shy. Kind, she says would never shy have boy. walked into a room and wanted to talk to a group of people, let alone yeah. perform in front of them. Yeah, so I was off well, already. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah. so what happens to him? What makes him, mm. makes him into what he ends up being? Um, and then, uh, and, and they were great friends, weren't they? Right from children, mm. the In Excess band, mm. with an incredible relationship. Mm. And what we find throughout this film is he's a man of great loyalty, and he obviously surrounded himself with a lot of good people. Mm. But having said that, when I spoke to somebody, and I can't reveal their name, that knew him very, whose partner knew him very, very well, when I was saying about, oh, he was actually very kind and very loyal, going back to what you were saying initially about how when a director knows somebody very mm. well, that can be a problem. And she said, he was a massive drug addict mm. and he was a drug, and people that came into his orbit. aura, orbit, ended up taking a lot of drugs. Right. My right. husband knew Paula very, very well. Right. Paula never even sipped on a glass of really? champagne. He got her on drugs and he got her on drugs really fast. So I was like, Oh, because wow. I've just come out of the film wow. loving him. Wow. So I fell in love with the little boy, and then I got to see Michael Hutchins, mm. the in excess rock god that I'd never known. Well, I think what you're probably describing is indeed what I thought he was towards the end of his life and career, and that's interesting because this film doesn't actually present that. But what I thought was intriguing about him as a child was his gentleness. There was a gentle inquisitiveness, and there was a sort of... Not Very femininity, curious. but a, you know, a sort of curious, sort of creative. He was a sensitive flower. I mean, he was a really sensitive a flower. A sensitive flower with just the addict's gene yeah, yeah. running, coursing through mm. his veins, as mm. we know, mm. you know, as a family of, who deals with addiction. That was coursing through his veins. So again, we had an extra understanding, I think, yeah. of that because the addict. But um, yeah, when we see him and, and, and the beginning of the bands, and, and this will be weird because I suppose a lot of people watching this will be mad in excess bands. I had no idea. The music. What a performer he was And as I'm well. like, God, mm. I loved it. I yeah. absolutely loved it. What an incredible performer and what a beautiful, yeah. beautiful looking man. Yeah. I mean, truly. Oh, he was exquisite. Exquisite, mm, wasn't it? Because mm. again, towards the end, and I love the way a lot of people described. You know, you'd walk into a room, and when he looked, at, I mean, you hear it off on the set when he looked at you. You were the but only person. Were, yeah, in yeah, the yeah absolutely. But I mean, just in that brief time that we spent with him, you could see how you would be caught in that absolute, all-encompassing orbit of importance. And he was looking for love. He had a very, yeah, very beautiful yeah. mother, and it and she took him away from his brother. Do you remember? Mm, well, she just one day right. just took him abroad. That's right. And they talked to the yeah. brother. Yeah. So I think he had a very intense relationship with yeah. a very beautiful. 
mother who was a bit twisted. Yes. And I think, from what I gather from the scraps in the film, obviously quite a manip was quite a manipulative woman, mm. maybe. Mm. So maybe he learnt like the ins and outs of complex, beautiful yeah, 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 women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And therefore, I mean, Helena Christensen, the supermodel of all supermodels, fell madly and passionately. Now, in love before with him. Helena Christensen, though, there was I thought one of the richest indulgences of this documentary when you go to see it is a, a sort of ten to fifteen minute sequence where he's with Kylie Minogue. <gasps> And I, of course, I didn't think that, I didn't even know they were together. I didn't know they were a thing. Oh, I, I did. I, was I knew that, that because you'd forgotten she went from Neighbours yeah. star with, um, what was her famous, I, I should, should be so lucky. lucky. And then she suddenly came out Any idea? as this sex god dressed in leather. No, I, well, I do remember it because I remember thinking, we're hey. We did. It is such a treat, this part in the movie. Oh, it really is. Because it's voiced by Kylie. And I, and I just wanted to say, and I think the... A part of you's thinking, would it be nicer to have had speak, seeing the talking heads? No. It was made that much more powerful. It was and made you felt really you got more special. from her because yeah. you weren't seeing her talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really powerful. So you basically footage. get taken through their relationship. Well, you see them fall in love and you see this you footage. You watch them fall in love. Amazing. It's genius. It's it really absolutely is genius. And my heart was breaking all the way through it because I knew, of course, the way that it ended mm. up when he left her. He, you know, he fell out. I think he was fascinated by the fact that she was this childlike being, beautiful mm. being, a little fractured by fame, whereas his his fractures were at best by this point running quite deep mm. in his fame. And he could teach her everything about food and mm. wine and sex and drugs. And she says all of that, doesn't mm. she? Yes, yeah, she does. I mean, it's I don't it's want to ruin it and say everything. No, 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 absolutely. But... It's not the Kylie you see on the on the sort of album cover. This is this is real Kylie, and it actually it made me really respect her and it made me reevaluate her and that's what I love is when you feel like you know someone what you tend to forget when you know these people in the public realm is that they're real human beings going through real shit there was a I suspect sequence. she never ever got over falling no, in love with him not I the way that, that she spoke about no, it no. and I always think there is a real sadness I remember once being in a restaurant and watching her she was at a table next to us Tiny, teeny. and she was with that one that was much younger than her and I didn't really like the look of him, I have to say. And they were going to get married and he cheated on her actually. Right. And I, I watched, I was, I was having dinner with a friend who said, I'm never taking you here again. Because I just was watching her the whole time. There was such a sadness in mm. this beautiful, fragile creature. So I was invoking that the whole time I was listening to her and mm. I'm thinking, it's because she's still in love with Michael Hutchins. Yeah, anyway, so he leaves her, he tires her. But there was some Super 8 footage, or v it was actually VHS, of course, footage of them on the train, and that's really stuck with me, the footage mm. of how they were looking at each other on that train mm. ride, you know, the train journey. Anyway, he was a great workaholic. And it was forbidden love, because they yeah. were both working the whole time. Absolutely. So you got, and like she said, there was, was no texting, there was pre, no mobile. They'd fax so like, each other messages and to they hotels. Had, yeah, and then they had these fake names, but you'll yeah. find out all that. Out. It's yeah, a lovely. really lovely part it, it, of the It film. is lovely. Beautiful part. But then the Helena Christensen side of it. Yeah. Now, this was a part, <gasps> this sort of then heralded the part of the story that I did know about, but I didn't know the extent to which this... She fell madly, crazily yeah. in love with him. And again, we don't need to tell you how she tells that no, story. No, she is But beautiful. it's just... And then the life, the life yes. that they are leading, yes. again, is a window in. Because In Excess is now up there. And she you is know, the greatest supermodel. Yeah. And they've got homes all over the place. Uh -huh. And we see shots of parties and we... And she tells us, mm. and we see some great home footage of her. A bit oh, yeah, pissed the and, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you just go, oh my God, this is the beautiful And people. it's funny you should say that because given the fact that in a sense, even in the most benign rock and roll life story, drugs would feature more heavily than they're even really referenced in this film. I felt there was a little bit of it being held back the drugs thing, because I'm sure you're not going to parties with Helena Christensen and all those people with him lying on that sofa, and there ain't drugs being taken, and it didn't feel like... They all they all say the drugs, yeah. was the, but I think this is probably how he got access to these people. They yes. say, you know, Michael was so much more. Right. We're not gonna get involved if this is right. all about Michael the drug yeah, addict. Yeah, yeah. And I would agree with that. Michael was, you know, people want to just dismiss people as doing drugs as just drugs, but there's so much. Oh God! There's always going to be oh, so absolutely. much. Absolutely. And you know, and I, I fell in love with him in this film. I really mm. did. For he's, he was passionate about food, wasn't it? Yeah, why, he was. why, why this is very important to talk about this is because of what we find out later in the film. Food senses. and wine. Senses. He was, a, he was. Um, yeah. He was like that character from. You know, what's the word when the you book. just want to just. Yeah, decadent is where you want to sort of No, keep. there's another word like that. Anyway, yeah, like if you read the novel Perfume, Perfume which we both love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt there was so much... Well, you felt the awful, awful catery, awful catery or whatever it is, 
uh, senses of the nose and taste, which of course so the connected. smell of yeah. women, yeah, yeah. smell of food, yeah. the smell of wine. I imagine he completely what a dirty old com- bastard. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, <laughs> he definitely was. Oh yeah. Um, Did you find him sexy? I thought he was fantastically sexy, mm. uh, and that's not my scene. You know, no, long curly no, no, no. hair. You know, rock god. So you were you were hooked <clears> in by his allure. I was because I think yeah, that he I think was, was. I think that he was just fascinated by. All, I think he really loved women. Mm. I think mm. a lot of men will say they love women, yeah. but actually they love sex. I think he really loved, and yeah. I think this yeah. comes from the intensity of the relationship with, with his, his mother. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. So, well, and of course, <coughs> the Helena Christensen section—they're in Copenhagen on a particular night, and it's mentioned in the trailer. And uh, a cab driver. Uh, 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 they're cab, eating pizza yeah, on the, the street. street. Never like miss. young people, you know, young love, yeah. you know, munching pizza on the street. I'm sure and the he's not a violent really man no. at all, Michael Hutchins. The guy gets, screams at Michael, gets out, punches him, mm. and he goes down flat on the road and mm. smashes his head on the curb. Mm. And um, Helena thought she thought he was dead, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. And then they went into sort of lockdown, didn't they? He didn't well, want so to then, go to the doctors. Well, and... no. So they go to hospital. Mm. And um, he, he had, well, obviously he had a, a concussion, mm. but he wanted to leave the hospital. They go home and for a month, he's very, very bizarre. He's mm. very bizarre. He won't, erratic. He's erratic, doesn't come mm. out of his room. And this is what we know about Michael for the whole of the mm. rest of his life. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Um, very dark, extremely depressed. Mm. She eventually gets him to go back to the hospital have these scans, he comes back and he says he's got a little bit of damage mm. somewhere, something had happened. He basically is keeping it secret from her. Mm. What it, what it, what was the problem? He then, he then changes and he has lots of violent outbursts. He, he really does upset the people that are closest to him yeah. that have been there around him all his life. It's absolutely tragic. Yeah. But still at this point in the film, you don't really know that it's, it's really connected. He loses his sense of smell. Well, I was going to say, he loses his sense of taste And I remember that years well, ago. Yeah, well, smell it's, and, the it's the same thing. same thing, yeah, same smell thing. and taste. I remember years ago around when Paul, when he died, and there being this story about he had lost his sense of smell and it, it played a part in his suicide yeah. and all of this. was like, he lost his sense of smell. Part yeah, I always thought like, that was a bit of a stretched <clears> thought in the press. But when you see the story mm. and you realise what a sensory person mm. he was, to lose your sense, he can't taste wine, he can't taste women, he can't taste food, he can't taste yeah. all these things. He's lost a sense of himself. Yeah. That's, what he, that's what we find out, he loses a sense of himself when he mm. loses all of this. Um, and it's just absolutely heartbreaking. And you see the footage then changes, yeah. don't you? And you see the Michael Hutchins that I knew that I found very unattractive actually. Yes. There's a deadness to There's his eyes. There's a total eyes. deadness that creeps into him. I mean, his life the is hair's a bit yeah, greasy, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a bit... And this is when he meets Paula. Yeah. And I thought the whole Paula Yates thing, again, you know, you've got that big breakfast. I remember watching the big mm. breakfast the morning he was on, before I was going to work, and thinking, oh my God, this is... Her so, poor husband. Yes, I mean, but she'd always had a photo up of Michael Hutchins. All of, she'd yeah, always been obsessed with bizarre, Michael Hutchins. Isn't it bizarre? Yeah. So she went from never having a dream. It was interesting for me. It made me realise that. Well, it made me want a documentary about Paul Yates as well because I mean she's a fascinating oh, character. Oh well, that is the. We have to have. We, I mean, there has to be have, one because we get we stop at their death, don't yeah. we? But we need the rest of the story. And 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 that's when I remember the story picking up and and being involved in reporting on it and. The whole Bob Geldof side of it, so they, they do so they chart go into all of quite that. a lot. They don't do they? go the into that quite a lot. And, and then really, it's, it's a sort oh, Bob of Bob Geldof didn't want his children going no. to live in Australia no. with two people that were on heroin. No, it wasn't. No, and absolutely. yet he was painted as this absolute monster, wasn't he? Mm. And mm. Paula was constantly in and out of court. And actually, Michael Hutchins, actually in this part of the film, is for me the dregs of where you are, where you get to with addiction. Yes. Woe is me, poor me, poor me, yeah. another drink, poor me. He won't let the kids come to Australia. Yeah, and I'm doing, yeah, yeah. well, no, he's not, you, you, you're an yeah. addict. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're his children. Absolutely. And you've stolen his wife. And I have to remember, say, I remember at the NXS gig in Manchester, which was only a matter of months before he died, or, or six months or whatever, um, Paul Yates was rattling down the front, you know, in the mosh pit area where there's the crowd and then there's the stage. She just kept running up and down with, the, with and she must have had a, what, a baby. Baby on the yeah. breast always. Baby on the breast all the time. And she, but she looked off 
her tits on well, smack. Well, I was at the Spice Girls audience with, yeah. um, this was something ITV used to do, right, yeah. and it'd be an invited audience, it was only female audience, and it really was a hot ticket right. to be at this. And I was there, and um, Paulie Yates was there with the children. And so how it works is, yeah. I don't know if you remember this, a celebrity, a famous face would stand up and ask a question. That's so right. whatever it was, yeah. the band would perform, and then they would ask a question. And Paulie Yates stood up and she had the children with her, the girls with her, and she was absolutely nutted. Right. And she had to ask this question of the girls. So and they chaos. had to have her removed. Really? They had to have her removed really? from the audience wow. because duty of care, she was there with these children, she was off her face. So you it was so sad. So you very much, that's interesting, so you very strongly feel that Hutchins was her gateway in. He, well, he this is only her. what I've been told by yeah. people that know, right. that know okay. her. Well, I mean, remember what she yeah. was like. She was this bright yeah, little thing. Really was. And then tragically. No, I know, don't even go there. Her, her daughter, I know. Um, so, so yeah. And so, so I mean, I remember the stories like her saying, "Oh, I'm sure the first time I slept with Michael, he did four things that I'm sure were completely illegal." Mm. And yet, the two of them. Imagine for Bob Geldof what that was like, mm. you know. And yet, the two of them. Then the film, to me, takes a very dark and very miserable turn because yes. you have got the story of the two addicts that just think the whole world is mm. against them. Well, actually, no. But again, I didn't feel it was presenting it in a sort of critical way. Not that it necessarily should. I mean, you didn't any... need to. No, you didn't need just to. Just by his. Just by yes. his. Yes. Yeah. Just by his. His. His own. And then, of course, footage. the tragic. The tragic way in which he did take his <clears> life. Well, I mean, he was, obviously, he was a sexual deviant. <laughs> yeah. That's right, it's good. Yeah. And he, um, he actually hung himself, didn't he, on his asphyxiation yeah. on the handle of the door in the hotel. Mm -hmm. But, um, and in fact, I think right up until, um, until uh, Paula died, she was fighting for su the suicide verdict to be taken down because she said it was a sexual right. thing of his, because she didn't, she was desperate that Tiger Lily, their daughter, didn't think that their father would have killed her father. It's better to think that, it's, it's a, you're looking at diminishing returns when you're trying to think what's No, I, I, I completely you, you understand, understand that? that, yeah, because right. for a child to lose their parent through suicide mm. and mm. think, what is a child ever gonna think? You didn't care enough about me mm. to stay, do you know? And also I think that would have been tied up right. for Paula as well because right. they were selling themselves as this great love, yeah, the only yeah, yeah, love, yeah. the one love. No love has yeah. ever been like this ever before. He wouldn't have killed himself because he yeah. loved me more than life itself. So yeah. he wouldn't have done that. Again, the madness of... of I think if I had a problem with this documentary, my problem with it was around the ending of it. I felt that it, it, it tried... It had an awful lot in there and I didn't feel there was enough time to breathe. I could have done with a little yeah. bit more of a sense of, which you got a lot of in Amy, yeah. a sense of his music, not his musicality, because you got a sense of the performer and I thought that was really refreshing to see. He was an incredibly physical and an enigmatic God. performer on stage. Amazing. In that way that you often think of, I don't know, you sort of think of Mick Jagger. You, you, I think you, yeah. you invoked Mick Jagger when we walked out. Yeah, but he, uh, well, no, what I saw was that Mick Jagger kind of annoys yeah, me. Yeah, no, he's a sort of gurning cartoon. But his cartoon. was just visceral. Yeah, it was just yeah, like, was... he was just trying to get out of something and yeah, it was real, yeah. whereas was, he's all posturing with yeah, Mick yeah, Jagger. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Jagger's yeah. fake, whereas... Was, but, um, yeah. but I did find the end of the, by the end of the documentary, I almost <laughs> felt like we were, it was almost like a pile-up of, co of content where I didn't feel like I'd really got a chance to sit with him. And that's not about making a documentary longer. That's about pacing it and it's about speed. A bit I, it, absolutely, I think it needed to breathe. <coughs> I mean, we were being hit round the head for, with really rich content from Kylie and Helena and the family, the family and friends and other band members and what have you. But then I just felt like I lost, you know, he was such a workaholic. I lost where his, you know, how did the music chime with his sensory love of the world? You know, in terms of literally yes. the music, not the performing, but what he was writing about, what he was yeah. singing about, what made it... Yeah, you know. I think if you're an In Excess fan, which I wasn't, no. so I was just fascinated in him and his relationship. It was, it was fine, but I loved yes, his film. Yeah. But I imagine if you were a real fan of it, In Excess, you'd that would be very it. frustrating because yeah. you'd be wanting to know the genesis of the tunes Absolutely. and stuff, which I, I, just don't, yeah. I just don't care about that. Yeah. I was just fascinated by him. So that's interesting. So you genuinely don't feel 
it was a death call. So he didn't kill himself. You did because I couldn't work out whether the sense of his his death. Oh, I was... don't know. I wouldn't say that. Oh, right. I mean, because what we do then find out mm. is that actually he's hidden the fact that he had he had real brain damage. Yes. He had proper brain damage yeah, 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 yeah. from and, and depression. A proper bleed and on he'd, the brain. And he'd and kept yeah. that secret from everybody. Mm. So I mean, there's somebody else that I know who's, who's um, partner was um, uh, run, uh, he was on a bike and he got knocked off his bike and got a brain damage, a similar thing. Mm. And she says he was like a completely mm. different personality, violent, depression, mm. he wasn't the same person. And I think that's, mm. that's what happened to him. So Michael, before the brain damage, you would say, God, he loved life too much and he loved everything. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he was... Right. I don't think we find out for sure that that wasn't suicide. Well, I guess perhaps like real life, one we will just, never know. We will never we'll know, will never know, will we? No one will ever know. Yeah, I mean, I think if I had a fundamental issue with it, it would have been that I, I was reminded of a few catchy tunes, but I wasn't reminded of his legacy or right. the musical, the heft of his music or yeah. how the music was sort of a reflection or an articulation of him. Yeah, well, I mean, it'd be there was really quite... interesting to see the comments below. Yes. Please comment about if you're an in excess fan, how how sort of lacking maybe yeah. this film might yeah, have yeah. been for you. I like the little deviation off into um, his little attempt at a solo career and then them pull, having, sort of having to pull himself back. There was some neat, neat was that neat after the that. brain? I think it was, yeah. It was, that was sort yeah. Of, it was almost he the turned first against since, he turned band. against his own yeah. band. Even. That's when we knew that there was yeah. something because it yeah. was so out of character. Poor man. I know. Poor, poor I man. Know. His family, all those. Because of what does come across is people really loved him. Yes. His friends, his yeah. family, his girlfriends, yeah, yeah. all his exes, you know, they yeah. loved him. Yeah. So, so sum up and score and I think when we score this we're kind of scoring it comparatively alongside other similar types of films like Amy and Whitney and stuff like that so what would you how would you would you recommend people go and see this a hundred percent like I really want our daughters to see it because mm. I just think it's it's just you know the re the best movies for me are the movies of life and this yeah. is real life yeah, yeah. and I just I just I just absolutely loved it I went thinking oh I'm probably going to be I've probably yeah, just yeah. got to get through this we've got to watch it to review it for the channel and I absolutely will you remember I loved mm, it yeah. I loved every second of it I was hooked you were smitten um, with him, I was fascinated you? by it. Mm. And I, fa I love to fall in love with characters, you know, whether you're reading a book or mm. whatever, or a, or a character in a movie. And I did, I fell in love with him and I wanted to, I wanted to be his friend and I wanted to be his mum and mm. I wanted to look after him and I wanted to, yeah, so, yeah, I was fascinated by him and all of the cast of his life. Yes. I desperately want to know more about his mother and his father. I might even get an autobiography oh and oh read right. about him. Okay, there you go. So I would say, yeah, I'd absolutely say to go and see it. Okay, great. Probably, probably an eight out of 10. Yeah, uh, I'd say the same. I'd say it's a incredibly solid workmanlike documentary i think it does the job I, I, you know from a documentary filmmaking perspective yeah, it's probably I, very lacking i always it? get a little bit itchy when the director knows the subject intimately and so how well did he know him? well he worked with him on countless in excess yeah. videos and worked on D dogs in space i think it was a film that they did together and surely yeah the benefits of that outweigh well there is always that balance there is always that a balance. good director would have other people yeah, and to I think, balance it like our yeah. producers and Absolutely, and I think to all a bit intents and purposes, I think he, he does succeed the director in doing that. I think you're you're given a sense of the man. He perhaps might have skirted past some of the sort of more I don't know questionable elements in his life, but at the same time, you are left to your own your own judgment. I yeah. just felt that if I had any criticism at all, I just felt like. I could have done with a bit more music, a bit more of a sense of the musical origins and his yeah. passion and how all of his excesses, in excesses, went into his musical needs as much as his sexual and sensory and awful catering needs. Um, I thought for me, this is worth the price of your cinema ticket just for the Kylie Minogue sequence oh, alone. Oh, it's just brilliant. It's an incredibly brilliant. tender, beautifully talked about. It's a about, love story. Heartbreakingly expressed by Kylie. Um, portrait of, a, of a, a, a pair of young birds falling in love and it gives me goosebumps just and thinking Helena. about yeah and uh, Helena's was lovely too and it just came that little bit later but I was really smitten with Kylie because I think we all feel we know what Kylie is and it was just it was it just 
the, you know, for me, when I see a film like this, where are those moments where I'm, I'm flicked into consciousness and I go, oh, hang on, I, I thought that Amy did it all the way through because I thought I knew Amy, I didn't like her, I didn't want to like her, she was irresponsible, she was a mess, she was, and terrible judgments. The film, phew, 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I'd probably give it the same score. I'd give it an eight out of 10. I think, it, I think it's a really, a really, I think all these biopic type things are incredibly compelling. People come and go as I love them. Mm -hmm. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.